What's up, Bigfooters and other outdoorly enthused folks? My name is Brady, and today we'll be reviewing Discovering Bigfoot. Stay tuned! Alright, welcome back guys. Hope you're all having just a fantastic day. And uh, with Todd standing in the news for his new court case coming up, uh, I thought it would be an appropriate time to finally watch and review Discovering Bigfoot. So with all that said, let's, uh, let's just jump right into this review. Alright, so right off the bat, I just want to say that your enjoyment of this film is probably going to depend on what you think of Todd Standing. If you don't like Todd Standing already, chances are you're not going to like this documentary. And if you are a fan of Todd Standing, chances are you're really going to enjoy this documentary. So it really depends on where you stand on Todd Standing as of now. I don't think it's really going to change anything. It all really depends on what you think of Todd Standing as of now. Alright, so once I started this documentary, the first thing that really caught my eye is that this documentary has a very YouTube video feel to it. I could go one of two ways. It could either give you more of a connection with Todd Standing, and you could really like that way, or you could be on my end and say, uh, it kind of is unprofessional at times, and he kind of plays over dramatic music, and he has a lot of drone shots. I think the overall YouTube video feel to it makes it seem much longer than it actually is. But this, this is just me. Uh, this is just something I notice as a video editor. If you don't edit videos, you might not even notice this. It probably won't even be a problem. This is really just something that caught my eye. And the three main figures featured in this documentary are Todd Standing, Dr. Jeff Meldrum, and the late Dr. John Bindernagel. And we'll get a little bit more into the involvement of each researcher as this video goes along. Alright, so right off the bat, he mentions his petition to declare that Bigfoot is real in court. Now, as of filming this, I just now watched an update video, and they are going full speed into this court case. Personally, I think going into court for this is very unscientific. That's not really how you get a species recognized in court. So that's going to be very interesting to keep an eye on. Honestly, I hope it all goes through well for them. I'm just not sure it is, because I'm not sure you could prove that something exists through the court. That, that would be something that has to go through scientists and PhDs and hands-on tests. So I'm not sure how it's going to go. I'm hopeful it works, but that is not the focus of this documentary. So let's really move on to the documentary itself. All right, so this really spends a lot of time with Todd standing in the field, tracking, going through the terrain, and looking for Sasquatches and doing his research. It doesn't really cover the history of Sasquatch, other pieces of evidence that have been found. It really focuses on Todd standing and his journey looking for Sasquatch. And really without getting into a whole lot of spoilers, that's really all it is. So if you are a fan of Todd Standing, you're going to like the documentary. If you're not a fan, you're not going to like the documentary. Personally, I am neutral. I'm open to Todd Standing's evidence, but I'm also skeptical at the same time. So I really went into this with an open mind and some fresh eyes. But really, your enjoyment on the film really depends on what you think of Todd Standing. So with all that said, I'm going to get into some of the specifics of some of the evidence that Todd Standing presents that he has found over the years. I'm not going to show any clips because that's Todd Standing's evidence to share, so if you want to see it, you can go check out the documentary for yourself. But if you have seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about, and I'm just going to share my thoughts on those pieces of evidence. Alright, so the first piece of evidence that Todd Standing presents in this documentary is a night vision video of Todd Standing tracking a Sasquatch through the snow. He is following this creature's trackway, and he pans up, and there is and there appears to be a figure standing in the trees. Now it's very indistinct, you can't really tell much detail, but it does look as though something is there. Whether it's a shadow, whether it's a creature, you can't really tell any detail or any discernible features of this figure. Now he was following these Sasquatches through the snow, he knew there was at least two, and then out of nowhere a log comes at him through the woods and he discovers there are three creatures, and once he gathers himself after the log comes at him, he pans back up and the figure is gone. I'm not sure what that figure could be, it's very indiscernible. He goes there and does a size comparison and it looks much larger than him, but the bushes do obstruct the ground, so if it is a hoax, it could be someone standing on a bench or something. So overall, that piece of footage is going to remain largely inconclusive. 
and on a different night, Todd Standing sets up three apples in an area where he will be sitting throughout the night, and he has a couple of cameras set up to document his experience in this area. A couple of Sasquatches do come into his camp and distract him, make noises all around him, and while there is one Sasquatch on one side grabbing his attention, one of his cameras films in the background a hand reaching up and grabbing each of the apples individually off the log. And I really thought that was an interesting piece of footage. Watching it for the first time, I was kind of blown away because that was really interesting. It shows the intelligence of these creatures. Now again, all you see of the creature is the hand, so it could be hoaxed. That is definitely a possibility, but watching it, if it is real, that shows some very interesting behavior, and it shows some real intelligence with these creatures. And I thought that was really interesting, so I really hope that piece of footage is authentic. But, this scene is also going to be very suspicious depending on what you think of Sasquatches seeing in night, and if you believe they can see infrared light or not. Because in this area, Todd Standing has set up an infrared light. It is an infrared floodlight to flood the entire area so his night vision camera could pick up the creature. Now, if you believe Sasquatches can see infrared light, then it would be very strange for the creatures to come in that close because it would be seen just as if we had a regular spotlight to our eyes. And if they're trying not to be seen, why would they come so close to Todd with such a large light in the area? So that's really something to think about when looking at this particular piece of footage. Personally, I think Sasquatches can see infrared light. If you guys are interested, we can go into why in a future video. But personally, I think they can see infrared light, so for me that is also one point of suspicion with that piece of footage. And it really makes me think why would they get that close to Todd standing while he's in this area. But that being said, the Sasquatch's behavior does seem to be spot on for what they are reported to be, so it's always a possibility. It's always possible that that is an authentic encounter. All right, so at this point in the documentary, Todd Standing brings out Professor Jeff Meldrum into the field in an attempt to prove to Jeff Meldrum that Todd Standing is having close encounters with Sasquatch and to hopefully allow Jeff Meldrum to have his own encounter or sighting with a Sasquatch. I've seen this in the Les Stroud Survivor Man Bigfoot, but at this point, Todd Standing shows Professor Meldrum some very interesting stick structures found in this area. And not only do they find large structures, they find some large, deeply impressed tracks around these tree structures. And he demonstrates how a human could not make these tree structures. They wouldn't even be able to break the small trees that these tree structures are made out of, which are clearly snapped as well. Personally, the most interesting part of this large structure is there was one branch that wasn't even touching the ground, and there was another branch that was completely upside down in the structure. And that pretty much eliminates completely the possibility of it simply being wind or snow load or anything similar to that, any sort of natural occurrence. It is clearly made by either Sasquatches or people. It's at this point that I have noted that this documentary starts to feel a little bit too long, Personally, but that's because it feels like a YouTube video, like a very long YouTube video. But again, that's something that I just noticed personally. So you really might not even notice at all. And now Todd Standing shows both professors uh, the footage that he's gathered throughout the years. Now Todd Standing is very famous for supposedly capturing a few video portraits of Sasquatch faces while he's out in the field conducting his research. He has a few videos like this. One video, I believe it's video four in his collection. It's a huge turnoff for me. It does not look to be authentic at all. It looks like it has very Muppet-like skin and completely dead taxidermy eyes. Um, and that's really the thing that causes me to be so skeptical with Todd Standing, is really that one particular piece of evidence because it just looks so fake. And if it is fake, does that automatically mean all of his evidence is fake? So overall, we can't really tell either way. What if this one was a publicity hoax and the rest just happened to be authentic Sasquatch videos? Who knows? That's really that's one of the things that gives Todd Standing his, his reputation of being a hoaxer and some believing him to be authentic. It's kind of a half and half split. And that's really one of the big reasons why. But both of the PhDs, Professor Meldrum and Professor Bindernagel, do seem to be impressed with the footage. So that's also something to note when considering his evidence. And there is another piece of evidence that Todd Standing in the past has said shows a juvenile Sasquatch. It is another portrait video and it looks much more realistic than his previous video. Uh, this was also on Survivor Man Bigfoot. But even though this footage does look much better than the other one, Something that I'd like to point out is in Survivor Man Bigfoot, 
he pointed out that this was a juvenile creature. But in his documentary, he says that it was a sentinel. It was a day watcher for a Sasquatch group. So that's a little inconsistency with the story. I'm not sure if he just changed his theory based on new incoming evidence, or if it's an inconsistency with hoaxes. We'll never really know, so you can make up your mind on that. Um, the next very interesting point in the film is Professor Meldrum's uh, supposed night vision sighting. Now, I, I believe Jeff Meldrum. I don't think he's pulling our legs, and while he's out there camping with Todd Standing, he sees through night vision a large creature moving across a hill. He's not able to video it, I think it's just the scope that he sees it through, but upon recreating the event, Todd finds some very interesting footprints where this creature moved across the hill. I think this is a very compelling incident. Jeff Meldrum says it was huge, and apparently after Todd Standing looks at the area, and based on his own experience, he determines that there was multiple individuals in the area, and that perhaps the Sasquatch moved through that area so the others could get by, or to regroup with the other Sasquatches. So I thought that was a really interesting part of the documentary as well. I think Jeff Meldrum definitely did see something. The next piece of footage that Todd presents in the documentary is a piece of thermal footage, and thermal video just overall is usually very indistinct. It, it is blob squatch times 10, and this particular piece of footage isn't really any different. It's very indistinct. You can't really tell what's going on. But that said, uh, with Todd standing telling us what's going on, what he saw through it, his point of view, you can kind of see that looking at the footage, but by the footage itself, you really can't tell what the figure is at all, really. It's just a blob squatch on a tree. And at this point, Todd closes out the documentary showing his final piece of video, video 8. And this is by far the best Sasquatch face portrait that he has recorded and released. Compared to the other two close-up portrait videos, it has a lot more detail. It looks a lot more natural. You can see the wrinkles in the forehead and the bags in the eyes. It, it looks really good, and I hope it is a real piece of evidence. But if he has a costume maker for the others, maybe this is just another costume, but who knows. You can only see a partial of the face that appears to be looking down at him from a hill, hiding behind some brush. You can't see the full face, but the part of the face you can see definitely looks compelling. And it really matches up with some Sasquatch behavior, staying behind cover and looking through the brush. And most people would not notice that something was there unless, like, it made a noise or unless you knew ahead of time that it was going to be there. But overall, it is by far the best piece of evidence he presents in the documentary. And with the documentary ending, he closes saying that Sasquatches are the masters of the forest and that we will never outclass them when it comes to the woods and these things are the bosses of the mountains. That is their terrain and that humans will never outsmart them in the woods. So overall, again, this documentary depends on what you think of Todd Standing. I thought it was a perfectly fine documentary. I probably won't watch it again. But yeah, I thought, I thought it was fine. I didn't think it was bad. Didn't think it was great. I definitely recommend checking it out if you like Todd Standing. And again, I'm probably the last person on YouTube to upload a review about discovering Bigfoot but I just was never really interested in watching it up until now. So I decided to check it out and share my thoughts. So I'll leave a link in the description where you can pick this up on Amazon if you don't have Netflix. But if you do have Netflix, you can just watch it on there. But with that said, I think that is gonna about wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep squatching.